Hi, in this video I'll show you how to adjust picture controls for accurate image on Hisense E7NQ and E7NQ Pro TVs from 2024 lineup. The TV that I've used to analyze colors and picture processing is 43 inch E7NQ for the European market. For color and grayscale analysis, I've used Portrait Display's Kalman 2024 software, G1 Pattern Generator and C6 HDR5000 colorimeter. Let's start! Before we go to picture settings menus, let's first ensure that TV is in home mode. Let's press menu button and go to settings and then scroll to system, advanced settings and here under usage mode, make sure it is set to home mode. Next step and the most important one is to ensure that you are using most accurate picture mode for given signal. So. In the settings menu under picture you will see different picture modes. Currently I'm sending HDR10 signal to the TV so I have HDR picture presets and from all those listed the most accurate ones are Filmmaker and HDR Cinema. In case of SDR content it's again Filmmaker or Cinema preset and for Dolby Vision I recommend Dolby Vision Bright. For gaming you can still use those same picture presets and just within them you will see game settings, game mode option. You enable it right here and TV will switch to low latency mode so you can get accurate colors plus quick response time to your controls. The only exception of this rule is Dolby Vision content there you need to manually switch to Dolby Vision Game Picture Mode. Now that you know which picture modes are the most accurate, let's see which options we have to fine-tune the image. Right now I'm sending HDR signal to the TV, so TV is in HDR Cinema Picture Mode. And if I go to Picture Mode Settings, you will see different controls. Backlight is adjusting intensity of LEDs behind the screen making the image brighter or dimmer. For HDR signals, this value will be maxed out, but for example, for SDR, it will be on lower values for filmmaker and cinema mode. And if you find the image too dim, well, simply increase this value. Now you can also let the TV do this automatically, but for that you need to go to advanced settings, brightness submenu, and here you will have light sensor. If you enable it, depending on room lighting conditions, brightness will change. But color temperature and colors won't, so this is good. This is good, you have full flexibility over brightness of the TV without jeopardizing color accuracy. In addition to this, you also have dynamic tone mapping for HDR signals, so if you want to make the image brighter to reveal more details in highlights. For HDR10 signals you can enable this control as well. And same goes for details in shadows. If you want them to be more clearly visible then enable dark detail. And you can leave other controls turned off like dynamic backlight control and adaptive contrast. And if you have calibration equipment there are certain controls available like gamma calibration but on my unit this control was not working so I could not use it to further fine-tune brightness of the image. Next if we go to color submenu for all picture modes SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision, gaming color temperature should be set to warm one for the most accurate white balance and color gamut needs to be set to auto. For some signals color gamut will be disabled and grayed out you won't be able to change it and you might see it set to native for example for Dolby Vision content but don't worry this is how the TV works so only when you have control to and flexibility to adjust it make sure it is set to auto so that TV maps accurately color gamut of the incoming signal and that colors are natural and not oversaturated. If you have calibration equipment then Color tuner and white balance give you additional controls. 
I did found some issues with color tuner, so at the end I kept values at zero. And for white balance, two point was working properly, even though it had very huge steps, especially for uh, black balance, these offset values. And 20 point controls were not working at all. But even with these limitations, I was able to improve white balance from dark to bright on this TV, even though Hisense definitely should work on improving calibration controls on their TVs. And finally, in color menu, we have low blue light option, which I recommend that you use if this TV is used as a monitor. So if you want to reduce the amount of blue light coming off the screen, but usually for watching content, you can keep it turned off. Next, we have clarity sub menu where you have noise reduction. So to remove film grain or noise from the old footage and then for compression artifacts on digital sources, you can enable this control. It will reduce clarity of, of blocking noise and, and blocks which appear on compressed image. But usually for high quality content, you just keep both options turned off. Next, we have motion sub menu with two options, ultra smooth motion, where you can add soap opera effect to movie content and if you go to custom option you will then have flexibility to choose how much soap opera you want in the image but if you don't want this effect if you want to see movies as they are without any motion smoothing then keep this option turned off and then if you send full hd or 1440p content to the tv then you can enable this mode and get 120 hertz refresh rate which is important for gamers overscan on this input for example it's disabled but if you have this option keep it turned off so now coming back to the top menu as mentioned we have game settings where you can enable or disable game mode within this accurate picture mode that you're using Intelligent mode settings, here you have AI picture optimization, which you can enable and disable very easily. So it recognizes the scene and what's happening in the scene and enhances the picture quality. But I only saw it messing with colors, so I kept this turned off. And then if you enable content type auto detection, if movie content is detected, TV will switch to filmmaker mode and same goes for IMAX content for IMAX picture mode. But if you're using those accurate picture modes from the beginning, then you don't need this automatic switching because you're already in the most accurate picture mode. And finally, we have aspect ratio with different options here. You can also zoom in CinemaScope content to fill in the screen or you can go dot by dot for one to one pixel mapping but usually automatic setting works fine and guys we've come to the end of this video thank you very much for watching it if you want more details on each picture control there are pdfs available in my store so please check links in the description thank you all for watching and i hope to see you soon in my next video have a great day. Bye.